let's start with sensor in the blood. What 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 is that? Is this is this? I mean, this is not the pill right. you swallow. How do you get how do you get no. a sensor into the bloodstream? Well, this is taking the wearable sensor phase that we're in right now to a kind of uber level of being able to have a window into body's medical essence, because so much is going on in the blood. And so if you can just inject in the vein in the arm uh, a, a sensor that's about 90 microns right now, we're working with Caltech on their nano sensor group, it will then lodge in a, in the, in a finger, and then basically that can talk continuously, uh, powered by the blood itself, uh, to a smartphone. Po okay, powered by the blood itself. Right. What, so the, is that like a hydroelectric dam in your bloodstream? Or? You got it. That's it. It's really. I just it's invented it. You, you could call it that. It sounds pretty good to me. It's a pow It's a the power of the blood itself is basically adequate for something that small to provide uh, a power source. So and and this this sensor, 90 microns. That you, there's not a risk of that that getting into the heart and causing a blockage or something? No, no, it gets down to a kind of watershed capillary bed area, so it really can't go much further than that. How do you make sure that that happens? Well, we're, we're doing animal testing first, uh, but, um, you know, that, there's already been some work along those lines. Stanford also has done a microchip floating in the blood, fantastic voyage, they call it. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I think we're, we're moving in that direction. That's a, more, more, uh, a, a bit futuristic. It's going to be at least a few years before we can really uh, get that enabled in, in patients. But I think it's exciting because then you could uh, follow uh, free circulating DNA continuously for someone who's had cancer or is at high risk. You can follow uh, antibodies in the immune system to, to be able to predict an immune attack. So all kinds of things by once you have that type of uh, surveillance. So what is the, I, I, I just got to understand this. So what is the sensor, how does the sensor, that sensor is able to, I mean, a genetic sequ sequencing machine now is, is huge, but this, you're talking about a sensor that's that tiny that somehow can, can be parsing genetic code. Well, that's basically an outgrowth of this digitizing human being. Because if you can get a genomic signature, it could be DNA or RNA, it could be an antibody, you can couple a sensor today to a specific signal. And that... Um, I see, so it's recognizing a pattern rather than, rather than decoding the whole thing. Yes, okay. exactly.